Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Black Wolf Audio. Uh, we are starting uh, level three of how to create your drum sample packs inside of Contact. Level one, we kind of discussed the basics of how to create your own basic drum sample pack that would be suitable for hip hop, EDM, uh, pop music, so on and so forth. Something that would just be kind of the same kick, snare, samples over and over again, and which it works for that kind of music. Volume two, we just kind of went over the basics of how to create your own uh, kind of acoustic instrument where we add a little bit of realism by being able to uh, have the same, uh, the s or different samples coming from the same drum played at the different, uh, uh, played at the same volume. So that way, again, it added a little bit more realism. Now what we're going to do is this, we're going to go ahead and create a, uh, a snare sample, but we're going to add different volumes. So what I mean by that is this, is that uh, you'll notice when a drummer plays, um, they might play loud or quietly on a drum. So we're going to translate that into contacts. That way you can do the same thing, add a little bit more realism in your tracks. So what we're going to do is double click here, go to our track, name it Metal Snare Example. And um, now we're going to click on this wrench, go to Group Editor, Map Editor, we're going to create for um, only three groups just to kind of make this video go by quicker. Um, if you guys want to add more, you can on your own projects, but this is just kind of teaching you what you need to do to create your own. So um, let's go ahead and select uh, groups uh, or selected groups only. Take off the edit all groups and let's start labeling these. We're going to call this S1, S2, and S3. All right, so now we got these all set up. Now let's go back over here. We have our uh, little um, MIDI roll that we made, right? Our MIDI loop. So let's take a listen. And we're missing the snares. So uh, I know the snares are going to be on D1. So, and this is D1 here. So, what we're going to do is this. Um, I have this other drum sample pack coming also from the metalkickdrum.com. Um, and as you can see here, there's a lot more samples. And I'll explain why. You'll see here at the end of uh, the samples, you see L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6, L7, and L8. These are just gonna be different volumes. So let me go ahead and play through them. That way you can hear exactly what I'm talking about. So you guys can hear how he's hitting the drum harder um, between the different levels. So, and that's what we want. We want to be able to uh, use velocity inside of our uh, inside of our recording software to be able to change it as the song goes along. But we still want it on the same note. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and start with L3. We don't really need L1 or L2 for the examples. You can do that if you want to, but for now we're not. Uh, so what we're going to do is this is we're going to take this drum sample and bring it into D1. Now back here in Pro Tools, you can see that this blue bar is taking up this entire lane. What this actually is, is your velocity. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to go over here where it says velocity and where it says 127. And we're going to change that to, uh, I don't know, 30. So as you can see here, now it's actually shorter. So if I hit the velocity higher up on this key in contact, it will activate it. If I go ahead and go further up, you can see that it's not playing anything. If I go back up, it will activate it again. So again, now we've created a velocity sensitive uh, sample, but let's add some more. So let's go over to L4, right? And uh, we'll do the same thing. Bring this over here. I'm actually going for this one to put it on this note for now, I'm gonna change in a second. What I'm gonna do is go to click on it, select it, make sure it's yellow, go to velocity, change it to 31 since the other one was 30. And then this one will go ahead and make it, uh, let's do 60, right? And then we're gonna bring it over on top of it, right? Let's go ahead and take a listen now. So you guys can hear is the velocity increases it'll switch between the samples. So let's go ahead and do that for the uh, last few. 
Let's see, that was L4. Let's do L5. And let's get L6 in there now too, just because we can. L7. All right, that should be enough. Let's let's just stick with that for now, right? Because um, when you guys actually create your own, you'll be able to do it differently. It's just to save time, I want to make sure that we go through this quickly. 90, great. And then this is going to be 91 to 127. I'm going to put this here. And let's go. So now... This is covering the full range. So now if I go ahead and click between the top of this key to the bottom on this piano roll, you're gonna hear the volume change. So, and that's between four samples. Uh, that's not including the other four uh, different variations, L1, L2, L7, and L8, whichever the ones that they were. Uh, so we can actually make this thing extremely dynamic if we wanted to, right? Now, here's the thing that where it kind of gets time consuming. We did that just for one group. Now we got to do it for S2. So we said that was uh, three, four, five, six. Let's do the same thing here. But now that we know what to do, it should go by a little quicker. So let's go with uh, this one here, right? Uh, that's why did that do that here let's go over here l2 and then oh actually we didn't want these did we there we go so let's go back we started on l3 so let's go here 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 and here. Now the one thing I should have done differently is because I kind of picked randomly, I don't remember which samples I did. So I really should have just picked the first one from each one. So that way when I went into group two, I can pick the second one of each level. So that way I make sure that it doesn't repeat itself. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind when you guys do it. Um, I should have just been a little bit more cautious of that, but A, hey, oh well. So let's go ahead. We said that this would go to 30. This was going to be 31 to 60, right? This one here is going to be 61 to 90. And over here. And then lastly, this one, which is going to be 91 to 127. All right, let's go through it quickly again on this one. All right, um, let's do this one here. Uh, I don't know if we use this one yet or not, but we'll give it a shot here. Here. And uh, I don't know, let's go with this one, right? Okay, so let's go back in Pro Tools. Let's set this up really quickly. 31. So this definitely does take some time, uh, but after you do it the first time, you won't have to do it again because once you save your file, um, you, you won't have to, again, do this again. So it will make it a little bit easier. It's always the first time setting stuff up. I think with anything that you do, it, it you know you have to kind of set the set the guidelines and the rules and spend the time to do it first. So, but in the end result, you get a pretty cool product and you don't have to worry about copy pasting all your MIDI stuff and sounding weird and everything else. Contact's gonna help you out with it. And then this we said was gonna be 91 over here. All right, so we have our three, right? Now let's see what this does though. It's playing all of them at the same time. Remember, we didn't want that. So let's go to edit all groups, was it? Selected groups only, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to cycle random. I believe that does it. Yeah, so now it's doing it randomly. So uh, let's go ahead and fix a couple things to get it where we want it to be. Uh, first off, let's go to edit all groups, 
right? Yes, it's selected. Let's go to the volume and change this to zero. Let's go over here, make sure this says zero now. Let's make sure this says zero now. Now they should all be the same volume. All the same volume, but same problem that we had before. It's not, uh, it is not playing the whole sample out. So we're gonna delete that first uh, module. I, I know it sounds weird, why would you do that? But you just have to or else it won't work right. So then we're gonna go down here to, where was it? Was it mod? Yeah, we're gonna click mod, go to add modulator, envelopes, hit this guy, go down to the bottom, attack, hold, decay, sustain, release, if we can get that. All right, cool. And now let's take a listen. And now we have our samples, right? So let's switch this to Omni, Omni and let's take a listen to this now. Let's take this off record mode. So what do you know guys, we've already created a kick uh, sample pack. And let's go ahead and demonstrate the volume. I'm gonna go ahead and create a roll over here. Uh, let's bring it over here. Okay, cool. Now, I'm gonna select this, hit uh, Command Option in Pro Tools if you guys have it, or it's Option Zero, excuse me. Go over to change velocity. I'm gonna have this go ahead and change smoothly from one to uh, 127, hit apply. And Pro Tools automatically gonna go ahead and change the velocity for me as you can see here, it'll rise. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like. So you can hear it change between them. And this would sound even more natural had we use those other different levels and had it um, implement them into this but again for what we were doing this kind of works but yeah guys I think that's going to kind of complete it uh closing notes for this uh I know that we kind of worked on kick snare but this obviously will work for toms uh if you're using toms I highly suggest you do the different velocities as well um depending on the genre of music you might want to do different velocities for the kicks um uh, it might not be required depending on what genre that you're working with um when you're doing symbols, guys, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing what I was saying with uh, this at the bottom with the um, uh, modulation, uh, because if you don't, then it's going to sound really weird and crazy. Uh, the other thing that you want to make sure is also here at the top of each instrument where it says max, have it set to 32. And the reason for it is this, is that if it's set to anything uh, lower to that, like, or lower numbers, like one and stuff like that, it's going to give you that same effect as if this was kind of cutting in and out, but between each, uh, sample. So if I have a symbol and I'm hitting it over and over as the first time I hit it and it's resonating and I hit the next one, there's still some variation that's going on that is going from the first one when you're hitting the second one. If you don't do that, then it's going to, uh, kind of just sound like it's cutting in and out again that machine gun effect so we're all about trying to make realistic drums here at least for this uh video example so anyways guys i hope you like this video i hope it was pretty simple uh if you guys want some videos on how to create your own like um images and scripts or or not scripts but yeah it kind of goes into a little bit of scripts and how to create your images for them let me load up my other drum sample pack that i created here if you don't want to make them look all professional uh looking like this guy here uh, I can show you guys how to do that uh, pretty easy. Just uh, message me and based on uh, fan requests, I'll go ahead and do it. But uh, let me just hear what this sounds like with my velocity. Yeah, yeah it sounds pretty cool. Anyways, uh, do me a favor. Uh, if you like this video, if this uh, tutorial series helped you out, uh, do me a favor, give me a like, please subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys at the next video. Thank you and have a great day.